This is Sebastian. He's a famous YouTuber that blew up this year, and he's also a 24-year-old multi-millionaire. I wanted some of the sauce, so I flew all the way to Colorado to ask him how he got all this money, how people like you and me can do it ourselves, and I got some pretty wild answers. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy today's video, so let's get right into it. I'm really, really excited for today's video. We're gonna give the people what they want from you, Sebastian. We're gonna give the people what they need from you. I already know who you are, very familiar with you, and as are probably a lot of people who watch the channel. But for those who aren't, can I get a quick introduction rundown of the Sebastian Georgiou? Yeah, my name is Sebastian Georgiou. I'm 24, I'm a Romanian, I'm Christian. I used to hustle when I was a kid. I got into e-commerce, I got into YouTube, I got into agency, I got into real estate, private lending, and now SaaS. That's a lot. Just very, very, very briefly into SaaS. Don't get the wrong, Just we just started. So the short of that is you're an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. You've been doing it for a while. We're gonna talk about that, your journey. Um, and spoiler alert, a lot about money. Um, so that'll be, the, that'll be the first topic we jump into today. Um, but before we even talk about how much money you made, how old are you? 24. 24 years old. How much money via your whole entrepreneurial journey have you made at 24 years old? I have no idea. No idea. Uh, m multiple millions. Multiple mil Like in revenue or in profit? In profit. Multiple millions. I'll say that, yeah. Is that okay? That is okay. M multiple millions. Millions and millions and millions and millions. Not millions and millions and millions, but probably just millions. Two millions. millions. More than two millions. More than two millions. I'm setting the stage for who we're speaking to today. <clears throat> um, so 24 years old, multiple millions. Yes. What does... What does an average month look like for Sebastian Georgiou now from a money perspective? From all businesses, like revenue? Yes, your entire business portfolio. An average month is probably 350 to 450K, if not more, maybe 500K. But there's like, there's no, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. There, it's, it's, it's hard for me to answer that right now because there are some things that I can't track. So with, with the things that I can't track like that, with the things that I can track, like this sounds so stupid. Like people don't understand what I'm saying. Probably like probably 700 K a month. I don't know. Can you give me the, the like the napkin math breakdown of where that's coming from? <sighs> yeah, I, I could, I mean, I, I don't, really like no like so what i do is i have like a profit and loss sheet for every single business so i don't know what percent of what like i just know roughly in my head overall revenue i, I, I couldn't like i could tell you <clears throat> less than 100k a month comes from my agency um you have youtube which is like between 30 and 70k a month or something like that depending on sponsors um you have private lending which i've made like 100k in a month from that before some months i make like 10k from it it just depends um sas is not profitable yet um real estate i was called out for this so i can't say like i make profit with real estate but i put in a uh this 1.3 million dollars into a house that is fundamentally worth at least two and a half million dollars now so like there's that always lurking in the background is that on purpose did you even do that on purpose yeah, yeah. Okay. um and then I have a business with Sebastian Esqueda, um, and that is pretty volatile, but it makes tons of money as well. So, and it's always changing, bro. It's like, I, there's too much going on for me to like know exactly where every single dollar is. And it's just way too much for me to, to know all of that stuff. I'm sorry. I can't sufficiently answer your question, like the napkin math, but I just know money's coming in every, every month we get more and more wealthy. So. I know it's coming in. Right. And to be fair, that's definitely a signal of a more seasoned entrepreneur because you've built out one business and another business and another business. So I'm certain it wasn't that way when you first started, which was how, how long ago for you? When did all of this sort of start? Your very first business? Well, I mean, I started flipping freaking go-karts when I was like 18, 17, maybe even a little earlier. So I did that. I mean, that, I guess that isn't considered a business more. It's like a side hustle, but... If you made money. It's yeah. I had that, I had that, like that mentality I had it like late teen. Um, but like my first actual business was like, like e-com. Um, 
Well, actually not true. So I used to be a caregiver and I worked for a company and then I... did I, not know that. Yeah, I was a caregiver for <laughs> a couple of months. And I worked for a company and then I quit that company and I put a ad in a newspaper um, that goes out to like, that's catered to old people. And it goes out in a specific city that is like filled with retirees. Uh, and I put an ad and I started like getting my own clients. And I did that when I was like 17 or 18. I didn't really talk about that very much. But well, I that, it, yeah. I, so I'm because now you have an ads agency. Like, was that kind of when you realized that that was something that you could turn into a business? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't think that far ahead of it when I was doing that. But I guess I understood the concept of, of like promotion and, you know, get like people in the door. I guess I understood that concept then. I wasn't really thinking about like marketing service at the time. Okay. Yeah, because I hadn't started that for a while. Yeah. Right. Well, we look, I, the reason I, again, I ask these questions is because I'm trying to set the stage, right, for who we're talking to, uh, what you've done these past couple of years, 24 to be exact, but uh, yeah, I suppose you said you were, what, 16 when you started on the go-kart business? Yeah, dude. I mean, I, I mean, okay, so the first thing I ever really did was sell muffins at high school, and I was like a sophomore. So what, we were 16 as a sophomore, okay. right? Yeah, so around then, 16, okay. 17. So like eight years. Yeah. Um, yeah it's been a minute. Yeah, and, and a big reason why I want to talk to you today is because I know that a lot of people who watch the channel, consume my content, want to make a lot of money on the internet, right? Uh, I'm sure most people who consume your content want to make a lot of money on the internet, but the reality is that the vast majority of people are not in the position that you're in sure. and will never be in the position that you're in. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump right into it with some of these okay. questions, okay. which is, first of all, Grill me. why do you think that 99% of people fail at, at business and at making money? Okay. Um, I think the reason people fail is because they give up. It's a, it's okay. There's no, I'm, however, I'm going to answer your questions for the rest of this interview. I want you to know that in my reality, there's never one variable or one thing that's true. That is absolute for whatever you ask me. So it's not like there's one reason 99% of people fail. I think the world the world, the way it works is most of the time, there's multiple things that are true at once. So I think one of the biggest things that people fail is because they uh, give up way too fast or they don't, they don't try it enough. And that, and then you also add that ingredient and you add another ingredient, which is they don't even think it can be possible in the first place. So those two things together pretty much guarantees your failure, right? If you just don't even think it's possible and you try it once and you're like, yeah, it's not working. Like you're pretty much guaranteed to fail if yeah. that's how you operate. And that is how most people operate, which is fine because it's normal because most people didn't grow up with entrepreneur fathers or mothers that were working, that were constantly moving the goalpost further. Did you? No. Okay. My dad was an entrepreneur. He was, I saw him building houses. He did construction, but I didn't really understand it. He was okay. just a house builder. So people don't understand that. So it's, it's something that they don't have in their like operating system, their mind and their conscious. So you can't blame them because they're not thinking right. They're not thinking properly. So if you teach people that, Hey, it's okay to failure. Like it's okay to fail. Like if you compare starting a business to learning how to walk like a child or a toddler that fails when it tries to walk for the first time, isn't going to just give up and crawl for the rest of its life because it's, it's, it's in its instinct to continue trying. So, the thing is you need to believe that you can do it and you and the reason you should believe that you can do it is because there's plenty of people on the internet that are doing it now and it, it's now it's easier than ever before with all the tools that you can leverage on the internet that and if a toddler can do it then so can you so that's why i think most does that make sense? it does okay. because it's something that i see even sort of in my sort of separate world all the time right because people will begin trading sort of the, the markets that I spend a lot of time in and make their first trade will be a bad trade and they will quit permanently, mm -hmm. right? Despite the fact that actually you really only need to win like 40% of them. How then, if I am a regular person, do I break through that mental barrier to, to sort of ascend to and become that 1% of individuals who is able to persevere and achieve great success at a young age? Yeah, it's actually a very, very simple answer. You need to learn from the people that have done it. So if your parents have not done it and they're lecturing you about this specific part of your life about like making money, let's say, for example, you need to not listen to your parents about making money. If you don't want to be like your parents in 
relative terms to money. Like if you don't want to have the money your parents do or like what your par- have the job your parents do. If you do want to go beyond that, you need to listen to people and learn from people that have gone beyond that because they will literally just share their journey and how they did it and they'll teach you. So people like me, people like you and all the other YouTubers out there that are no BS that have actually, you know, done some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's challenging. It's very hard. It's not something that a lot of people do. But I think that one of the most key parts is taking that jump on yourself. It's it's out there if you want it. But it's so hard to unlearn. I feel what so many of us are taught at a young age, which is like, go to school, do this, get this degree, go apply for this job, slowly climb up the corporate ladder. And maybe when you're 45, you will make enough money to finance that one car you want over 20 years and live. You know what I mean? And yeah, I, I don't think people have the problem of like getting out of that mindset so much. Cause I, I would, I would argue that most of the people that watch my channel or like my videos really want to get rich. And like, it's not like, they're like, I don't want to get a job. I don't want to do that. The, I think the issue that they have is they just like, they don't know where to start and they don't know like the, what to do and how to get started. When in, in reality, what you should do is you should just start whatever, whatever you think you should do, you should just do it. Because as when you start something, you're going to learn something else. You're going to like, when you go towards that area in the map, you're going to unlock like five more paths. You know what I'm saying? And so when you, when you just actually go down a pathway, so many more doors are going to open up to you that you'll learn and take advantage of. And then you can go from there onto your next path. But if you just, sorry, if you just stay still, you're never going to unlock those new doors that open up to you. And so that's what comes up. Like that's how people get ideas too, like bright ideas. I'm sure for you, it's incredibly easy for you to have like a business idea. Like, and I was talking about this with Sebastian. It's like, the idea is not the problem anymore. Now I only have so much time. I have to sift through the ideas and pick the best one because there are so many ideas. And the reason I have so many ideas is because for the last eight years or the last six years or whatever, I've been online doing all sorts of different stuff. So I have have experience in e-com. I have experience in YouTube. I have experience with marketing and agencies and services and all that stuff. So it's like, I can, I see so many gaps in the market that you could take advantage of and make a business out of, um, but only because I've went on those paths already. And so people that have it, you're never going to have those ideas. So the key is to just start what, it doesn't matter if it's the right thing to do or not. The key is to just start and get to level two. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and this is why that excites me so much is because this, was a huge obstacle for me for a long time, especially when I was, I was first an entrepreneur. And it's this thing you hear so many people say like, oh my God, so many ideas, so little time. But like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what are you actually doing from the time you wake up and go to sleep? Because what I've learned, and I'm, cu- and I'm, I'm curious to see whether you sort of agree with this sentiment, is that like, once I have an idea um, that, I've, that I've designated as something that is a good enough idea to bring to life, Anything that I'm doing outside of obviously a a fundamental level of planning to make sure that I don't just go into it blind. Once I have a plan, anything that you are doing that isn't that thing is a waste of time. And I think that includes meetings, you know, strategic calls and planning. And I think that humans, because you release dopamine whenever you set a goal, right? Trick themselves into this trap, uh, this, this trap of feeling like they're productive because every day they wake up and they're like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. So how did you learn to, instead of doing that, like just move and fail fast and learn via experience instead of, you know what I mean? Because even people who watch our videos, right? Like I, I love watching Entrepreneur. I love Alex Hermosi. I love all these guys, but I fall into a trap of just like thinking I'm going to do this instead of doing it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and I know people who watch this video experience that too. So how do you get around that? Like just move, just try it and go. Yeah, well, I'm not perfect. So I'm, I'm going to say that I definitely fall into that trap too. Maybe not as bad as before, but I think, I don't think there is like a strategic way or or like, even if you're looking for a strategic way to not fall into that trap, that might already even be like the wrong approach. Like, I think you just need to just do it. Just just go do it. But it sounds so stupid when you just say, just do it. But that's like, is this like fundamental awakening? The most stupid and the most generic advice is the best advice on the planet. The best advice in the entire world is don't quit. That's the best advice that anyone will ever give. How do I get extremely jacked and look amazing? don't quit. Like that's it. And everybody just, knows that. But the thing is, is they want the runaround or they want some other advice or some secret sauce, something that's more mysterious because 
people w- were led to believe that or people want to believe that they are the way that they are for some specific reason. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's like, it's the world is against them. And it's like, oh, if I had this one thing, then I could do it. But in reality, it's like, no, you're probably not a special case. And you probably just need to go to the gym four days a week and eat healthy if you want to get jacked. Or if you want to start a business, you need to just start. You need to just do one. You, everyone watching knows the businesses that they could start. They could start dropshipping right now. We have a free course. It's free. It's literally free. You can go and roll into it for free and learn how to run ads with TikTok, um, with TikTok and run ads on TikTok. A kid that goes to a church in Arkansas, he's 17. He started dropshipping, huh? I said shout out to Arkansas. Shout out Arkansas. <laughs> he started dropshipping probably two months ago. I don't know how many products he's tested, but it, it failed initially. He spent a grand. He lost all his money. He saved up some money and tried again. And so far this week, he's made five grand with 30% margins. So he's made his money back and then some. So it, it's there. It works. Like, you know how to do it. And he uses the free course. It's free. So like, it's there. You can learn it. And if you don't want to do drop shipping, there's all tons of other stuff you can do too. But it's there. He just he just did it. And, and the truth is, is he's just a random kid from Arkansas, right? Like he's... Maybe there's nothing special. You're about a him. random kid from Romania. Yeah, I'm a we're random all kid random from kids. Who cares? We're all like, random kids. So it's like it, that's the point. Is there's nothing special about you, most likely. And no, and not the at truth, all. The truth is, is you don't need that one thing or that secret sauce. The truth is, just listen to the most broad advice. Just don't. Just go give it a shot. Don't fail. <laughs> don't okay. quit. I mean. Okay. You. You. And there's something else I was going to ask you about later, but you. You walked right into it. You, you're. You're talking about like feeling you know people like to feel like the world is against them or like oh i wasn't dealt the right card like and maybe they watch this video and like oh these you know these guys sit on camera but they had x or they had y that i don't have they're so lucky yeah but you did not come from a wealthy background as Mm -hmm. as a matter of fact you came from a poor background Mm -hmm. and um are now where you are now there's so many people who are I don't want to say making excuses. I don't really like that word because I've been there mentally and I know how it feels, right? And everybody's sort of on a journey. But like to those people who are sitting there and it's like, oh, I can't do it because X or I have Y disadvantage, right? Like what, what do you say to those Why? people? So the reason, that, the reason that you are doing that is because you are trying to come up with a way to cope with your laziness or your own failure. So if, if, if it doesn't work for you and it's because of like, it's because the world is against you, then it's not your fault. And if it's not your fault, then you don't feel bad. And if you don't feel bad, you can continue with life. But if you do take accountability for it, then you do feel bad. Right. And so people don't want to feel bad. People don't, it's not a natural thing for humans to like enjoy being in pain, like even like an emotional pain. So if you feel bad about yourself, then you're going to come up with a reason to cope as to why you could not do it, right? And so, for example, if you, let's say you're dieting, okay? I have this problem. Like, I'm speaking about this because I have this problem all the time still. It's hard. I try as hard as I can, but I still fail. Like, if you cheat on your cutting, you'll come up with an excuse, and I'll find a reason to do it too. Like, if I had an ice cream, I'd be like, oh, it's okay because... I walked an extra mile today. I went, I went extra hard in the gym today. And I'll, I'll come up with any reason to just make myself feel better because deep down I know it's, it's always there and like you can't lie to yourself. You know, Sebastian, you shouldn't have cheated. You shouldn't have cheated. Why did you cheat? Like, and that's an uncomfortable feeling. And so people are not, they don't like that. And, and it's normal. I don't like it either. It's normal. But the best way to avoid it is to just, is to just like not put yourself there in the first place, right? Like just don't cheat. Like, Instead of saying, oh, I, it's impossible to start a business. I can't do it. Like these guys are genius. These guys are lucky or whatever. Just just go out and start a business and just don't quit. And, and you'll get so far. You will. You'll genuinely surprise yourself. Like if anyone is watching this and, and they think that I knew that this would happen to me, I had no idea, bro. Like I used to get excited about making $100. Like that's where I came from. So it, no, like you don't believe it. You, you hope for it, but you don't believe it. So I think that if you just actually do it you'll really surprise yourself about how far you can come because to be to give you one last thing and then i know you can i can tell you're wanting to no no i don't i don't i don't i just want you to keep talking i i was actually called uh stupid a lot growing up and i actually genuinely believed i was dumb (laughs) like i that's a that's a that's a real thing and i couldn't spell i couldn't spell in high school like i had okay grades. i was good at math i couldn't spell and 
sometimes people would call me dumb. Like they're like, why can't you like, cause they would see my grades. I would fail every single spelling test. I'd get like F's or, or 1.0s. I went to like an, a, a charter academy or whatever, but it was like 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 1.0s. It's like a D or an F. Um, and I would just fail all the time. And I was dumb. I felt like a dumb person and people called me dumb. They're like, are you dumb? Like, why can't you spell? And I grew up genuinely thinking I was stupid. Um, so yeah, it, I had a point. I forgot where I was going with that. But I think what the point I was trying to make is I really didn't expect to come this far. Like I had high hopes, but I didn't expect it. And what happens is if you just do what you're supposed to do, you'll really surprise yourself how far you can make it, like how far you can go. Yeah, I think if if there's any sort of two key points to take away that this far from what we've talked about is like, first of all, and I know this is a little bit ironic because we're sitting on camera talking, telling people what to do, but is to like consume content, but go try it. The the, the best teacher in life is failure. Um, and also that, you know, maybe, and I'm just throwing it, maybe, just maybe life isn't only about the avoidance of discomfort, but actually actively seeking it in order to become a better person, in order to become a better entrepreneur. And I've seen you totally change in the last six months, by the way. Since the last time that I saw you, um, your habits have changed, your fitness has changed, mm -hmm. the way you handle everything has changed. And at least from the outside looking in, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, it looks like that's had a direct impact on your bottom line and success of your channel um, and everything else that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's about really just like doing that thing and also understanding the importance of it, right? Because it's something else I wanted to talk to you about today. And um, honestly, even the main point of today's conversation, you have made a lot of money, but you are still pursuing greater success, greater wealth, right? So it's important past 1 million, past two, past five. For anyone watching this video, the majority of whom are probably young people, trying to figure out how to become rich, try to figure out how to become successful. Why is it so important to figure out how to amass wealth and figure out how to be successful now, soon? Okay, so, okay, I understand. So that, that changed the whole question. So right now, why is it important to do this right now? Yes. Okay, it's important to do this right now because it, um, the people that run the world are getting richer and richer and richer and richer and richer. Uh, and the oppression is getting worse. So what's going to happen in the future is there's going, we have a, a shrinking middle class and the middle class is going to disappear. And what we're going to have is we're going to have a few people at the top um, running the whole world. And then you're going to have a, an extremely high net worth class. And then you're going to have a poverty class. And this poverty class is going to live like they're going to survive. That's what they're going to do. They're not going to live. They're going to literally just survive. Um, and people might say that's crazy, but that's already kind of true because I think it's 60% of people or somewhere around 50 to 60% of people. Yes. My phone is ringing, um, that live paycheck to paycheck. And I think over 50% or maybe even more like 70% of people have uh, less than $1,000 or they wouldn't be able to pay an $1,000 um, emergency bill, right? So these people are already barely just surviving. They're barely just surviving and it's only going to continue to get worse. This is true. What I've been saying, I don't, the numbers are not 100% precise. You guys can go look it up. Majority of people are living in a very bad spot. They're just surviving. It's getting worse. In December of 2022, um, December was the sixth highest time in the last 50 years in terms of uh, how much credit card debt people got into. And so people are in more debt they've, that they've ever been in and interest rates are going up. So they're paying a lot of money on that debt. And when you pay an interest rate, that's just money that you're losing forever. And so these, these poor people are at the very, very bottom that are just surviving they are having to borrow money and they're having to pay these high interest rates. And so the, the little money that they make in the first place, like a lot of it goes back to the rich people when they borrow, like towards the interest rate. So it's like, they don't even get to keep it. So it's literally like a giant is stepping on them and it's not letting off. It's just getting harder and harder. And it's only going to continue, get hard, going to continue to get harder forever until there's like huge revolutions or like huge protests or like just people running in the streets and destroying everything. Like that's when things will change. But I don't think that's going to happen for 10, 20 years, maybe even longer. And so people get really, really upset. 
Um, but for now, everyone's distracted. Everyone's distracted with Netflix, with with TikTok, with racism, with body positivity, with feminism. They're just distracted. They're staying that way. But when they finally get over it, dude, I've never had this many people call me. I'm it's sorry. Okay. Literally, everyone's been calling it's me. It's all famous YouTubers calling um, me. But yeah, they're extremely distracted. But when they snap out of it and they're like, okay, we are barely alive. Like something is not right. This is not fair. Um, that's when it will happen. It'll just be like sheer manpower destroying the whole world because it's unfair and it is unfair and it will continue to get more and more unfair. So now that you understand to set the stage for what, I, what, why it's important to do it now, it's important to do it now because it's going to get harder and harder and the impression is going to get, the oppression is going to get worse and worse. Um, and lucky for you guys, if you're watching this now, um, AI has just started to become popular. And there's tons of ways, if you're creative, to make money leveraging this new technology. And like I said in a video that's going out on my channel very soon, if you're at the forefront of a new technology, when it comes out, you can make a ton of money. So like imagine buying a CryptoPunk. If you understood NFTs, you could get a CryptoPunk for free. And at one point they were invaluable like you couldn't even buy one people wouldn't sell it even for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars so nfts is, is a new technology that people that were first they made a ton of money crypto internet and now ai as well um so there, there's opportunities out there um and for people that are willing to do it and for people that realize that the future is dark um and if you're anything like me like you want to have a family you want to have kids you want your kids and your wife to be protected. You want them to be safe. You want to be free from from oppression. Uh, you want to do whatever you want to do. Like you, you are. You want to be in charge of your own life. You feel competent with your abilities, and you feel like you can live a good life on your own, and you don't need a government. So, if you're like that, like me, then you need to do it right now, and you need to secure as much wealth as you can, so that you can distance yourself from the oppression, um, and so that you can be safe. So. To have a house somewhere in a in a safer environment up north in the mountains, uh, in, in a, with a ranch, say for example, with a farm, learning how to farm, learning having your own food, uh, training with guns, training anything, just being as competent as possible, um, so that if and when it does hit the fan, and people are running in the streets, your children are not afraid for their lives with your wife hiding in the closet crying. And instead you guys are safe far away from all the chaos. So that's why you have to do it now. That's why I'm doing it now. You know, it's like the cars don't matter. Like you have the cars, we have the stuff, but that is not important, but that's why they need to do it. And they need to do it now because it will only get harder. You mentioned a couple things that I want to talk about. Next question here shortly, you talk about distractions, right? You hear a lot of people these days talk about the Matrix, we of course are going to talk about it in today's video, but I have one more question on what you just spoke about. As you envision this sort of dystopian future, which by the way is pretty realistic given what we've seen play out in the last couple of years, how prepared do you think the average young man is? People like us, our age, do you think they're ready? Okay. People like us are not the average man. Okay, our age. Our age. So like 24-year-olds? Yeah, tw 20 to 25-year-old men. Com completely and utterly unprepared. Like, it would be... Okay. If if the, the tyrannical world that we're imagining right now was a human person like this, the tiny... The, the, the unprepared man, the 24 to 25-year-old man, the average man, would be like an ant like an ant fighting against that person. Why? Not even like a fire ant. Like just like a regular black ant. <laughs> Why? Because there's nothing that they can do. There's nothing you can go. There's nowhere you can go. If you don't have money, first of all, money is like, it's people like, they're like, oh, when I have money, my life's over. Dude, money's the first step. Like that's like the first tool. That's like the first key to get into the house with all the doors that you can explore life with. So money's step one. Like that's step one. So first, and most people don't have that at all. Like even, even if you have like 10, 20, 30 grand saved up, that's better. But even that's like, you're very, very weak against the world. Um, and, and, and because if, if, if something crazy happens, you don't have enough to get yourself out of that situation fast. Money runs the world. So if, 
something really, really bad happened and you don't have any of it, there's, you have no leverage. You have no reason. No one's going to help you. You can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. If you don't have money, then you don't have any tools to protect yourself. You probably live in a neighborhood or in a city with millions of other people. So if there's riots, you're in, at danger. But if you have money and you have, uh, you can live wherever you want and you choose a place to live based on what you think is going to happen in the future, like I was saying earlier, you're probably going to live on a self sustaining ranch with a bunch of land somewhere out in the mountains away from a ton of people. Right. And so if, if shit hits the fan then, and you or you're in that position, you're way more prepared. You're way more prepared and you have time to think and you have space and you have like a little bit of a game plan. Like personally, what I want to have is I want to have a runway and my own plane. And I'm, I am going to learn how to fly a plane. I'm going to become a pilot. So these are all things I'm going to do over the next like five to 10 years. And if I see it, like if I get a phone call or if I see it on the news or if I just, I'll get a phone call and be like, okay, something bad's happening. I can get in my plane, load my family up and bounce and I'm out. Like that, that's like the, that's where I'm trying to get. And like to go to another secret location where I have land and connections and relationships that I can bunker down in and live where I have food and whatever else I need. So that's what I'm prepared for. That's like not what I'm prepared for, but that's what I'm preparing for. So take that. In that situation, you, you are required to, to have those tools at your disposal. You probably need millions and millions and millions of dollars, right? And you need time and, and et cetera. So if you're an average guy living in, in an apartment, I'm going to say this because we all live in an apartment or except for Seb, but if you're living in an apartment downtown, like you champ, <laughs> and you have no money and you can't get out quick and something bad happens, you're done. You're done. <laughs> so it's like an ant. It's like, I'm trying to be like, against an adult, like at least like, like, um, a big beetle or something like, uh, like a college student that knows how to fight okay. <laughs> against a grown okay. adult. You know, that's like where I'm trying to be, but definitely not like an ant. So. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have a, um, dude, you certainly don't mince words. You have a, you have a very clear picture of how you imagine the future of the world looking. Um, what, okay. So what about, and then I'm going to go to the next topic. What about the people who are going to watch this video and be like, Oh, he's just trying to spread, you know, this, he's being dramatic. This isn't going to happen. That's not going to happen. W what about those people that, that are going to watch this and say that? Sure. Fine. If you want to say I'm crazy or I'm capping or I'm being dramatic, why? I have nothing to gain. There's nothing that by me scaring you, I'm going to gain from it. There's nothing. I'm, I, b I like to believe I'm a good person. I'm, I'm, I'm Christian. I, I don't like pain. I want people to be prepared I don't want people to feel helpless when a, something bad happens. Um, I've felt helpless before. I don't like it. Me too. And I just want to spread good. Like, I just want to help. I just want to help as much as I can. So there's nothing I'm going to gain by scaring you. And I, I'm not even trying to scare you. I'm just telling you what I think. I, I'm not talking about me. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm just, I know. I, I'm just trying to, I'm just telling you what I think. So if it does scare you, then it does. does. That's your response to it. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm just beating a dead horse. I have nothing to gain from mm. what I'm saying. So I have no reason to lie. I'm just telling you what I think. You've laid out how you envision sort of the future of the world going. You've laid out how prepared you think the average person our age is. And you also mentioned earlier um, what I see as sort of the linking factor between these two things, which is the reason why a lot of these people are unprepared, which is the fact that they're distracted mm -hmm. um, by something that is referred to by many people, many content creators and people in 2023 as the matrix. We have to talk about the matrix. I, I, I would ask you if you think the matrix is real, but I, I already know you do. So instead, I'm going to ask you to describe it to me because I promise you there are people watching this video that have heard it said on a hundred YouTube shorts, the matrix, matrix, but what does that mean? Like what is the matrix that the average person is in? Okay. So, <clears throat> I guess, okay, so the word matrix comes from a popular movie that most people have probably seen. But basically in the movie, um, humans are born and they're put into these cells where they're not living, like they're unconscious. Uh, and their life force is like a battery um, for the alien civilization. So the humans are basically like dead slaves uh, and they just provide life force so that the people that are in control can live and live life and be exist. Right. So they're, yeah, it's referring to them. So, 
keyword like slaves um, and life force. So that's what the matrix is. Like the I think what when people say matrix, they're referring to the prison, right? Same thing like in the movie, the prison that most people are in that they can't really get out of. And like you'll hear people say like break free of the matrix like they did in the movie and like you'll have your own free thoughts and et cetera, et cetera. But essentially, if you're if you're a slave to the matrix, you're you're stuck like you're helpless. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like you're just helpless. You're stuck in the matrix. So is the matrix, though, to you, all those things you mentioned earlier, you talk about, you know, I don't know, TV and all these other things that that people are sort of distracted you mean that's sort of like what's keeping them in this metaphorical bubble. yeah so okay yeah you're right so to tie it into with all the distractions so distractions are part of the matrix because we are not actually physically imprisoned like anywhere like we can move around and walk outside and stuff um but we need to be like uh mentally imprisoned um, and we need, they want the people that control the world and they, they want to retain their control. They don't like people like us. Like they don't like people that are trying to escape and get away from their oppression. And furthermore, trying to help other people do the mm. same thing. They don't like that. Um, so even though most of the world or most of the Western, Western America or whatever has barely enough to survive, they are still distracted by all the things that they should not be giving any attention to at all. Like you're barely surviving. Why are you playing video games? Why are you watching? Why are you watching Netflix? Why are you watching TV at all? If you can barely afford next month's rent, why are you watching TV? Unless it's something that's going to help you, right? Like spoiler, it's it's not going to help you. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it's really it's not going to yeah. help. It's not going to help. Even a lot of content on YouTube is a complete waste of time. Even if, but the thing is, is how you know if it's if it's good content is. If it makes you think about something, if it helps you, if it gives you some sort of clarity, if it, if it moves the needle just a little bit in the other direction of where you need to go, which is like complete financial freedom, step one, um, and, and beyond whatever comes beyond that, um, you shouldn't, you should be watching it. Otherwise you shouldn't. So yeah, they'll keep you distracted, dude. And, um, with all sorts of stuff, even like the news is terrible. Um, politics will keep you distracted. Um, current events will keep you distracted like the war in ukraine or like the vaccines or whatever else is going on in the world ultimately none of this stuff really matters to you um and you shouldn't really have an opinion on it anyway because it's not important and i'm speaking if you're barely surviving if you're barely surviving number one priority most important thing for you to do is to figure out a way to start earning more money so that you're not living paycheck to paycheck so that you can start saving up so that you can have a savings in case something happens so that you won't get annihilated. And then so you can take that money and invest it and start businesses with it and make more money. I definitely like I think that it's OK to have opinions on things. You have pretty strong opinions, as do I, as probably most people that I know. But what I really do agree with that you just said is that if you are in a position where you are nowhere clear to the sort of things that we've outlined in this video, right? That you need in order to be prepared for whatever outcome this world throws at you, um, which you are not going to achieve nine times out of 10 by sort of the cookie cutter life that is laid out um, for the average, I was going to say American individual, but really just individual in general. It's time to turn off whichever news channel you prefer and stop consuming Instagram stories and TikToks and all these reels that do nothing to add value to your life. And it's time to start focusing on the things that are going to move you if, if it's even just 1% closer each day towards that financial freedom that you talk about. Because that to me is ultimately breaking out of the matrix. Having true jurisdiction over where your life is headed and what you are doing is breaking out of the matrix. And the natural next question that anyone watching this video is going to have as we get towards the end here is going to be, okay, but Sebastian, what do I do, right? Like, what are the vehicles? You mentioned earlier, you, you talked about crypto, you talked about AI, you talked about NFTs, different things people have been early to. Do you see those as the vehicles to, to get out of that sort of average preoccupied life? And if not, like, where else should people be putting their attention? Well, yeah, I think that they are vehicles. I'm going to definitely try to leverage them and take advantage of all of them to make more money. Um, but like for the people that are trying to, let's say you're watching this and you want to break free, because let me be clear, 
I'm not telling anyone that's watching this video that they should live according to my plan. This is my plan. Yeah, I mean, it worked pretty well. <laughs> you, you can you can well. do whatever you want. If you want to live your whole life and and be like a constant consumption machine and just like a like a dopamine ATM, like always doing what keeps you comfortable and watching doing anything, whatever, playing video games all day long, whatever. And then when the time comes, you get decimated. If you want to live that life, then go live that life. Mm. That's fine. But I don't want to live that life. So I'm just going to be clear there. But how? Well, the first thing is you need to make money because money is a tool. Money is the key to the door that opens up all of the other doors. So that's step number one. So you need to learn what money is and how to make money. I have all the videos on that. There's other channels. Champ has videos, my videos. There's pretty, there's a lot of YouTubers out there where you can start learning um, about money. And honestly, it's not hard. There's so much information on the internet. It's not hard. And, and the problem is, is that you get distracted. It's all here. Like it's, it's, it's in, it's in your phone. It's, it's in your life. If you have an internet connection, it's there. Yeah. The problem is, is you get distracted. So I promise you, if you, if you turned off your phone from like, say you wake up, uh, you turn off your phone one night and you wake up and you don't turn it on and you just go on your computer and you are not allowed to go on any Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, or any shows or anything. And all you're allowed to do is just go do research on money and what it is and, um, how to make it. I guarantee you that with one day, one day of doing that, just not going on your phone for one day, you'll have more information and you'll be smarter than 99% of people because that's how because low. Because you tried for one day. Yeah, that's how low and how ignorant most people because are. Because you stopped being an NPC for 24 hours. Yeah, literally, yes. And most people are NPCs. So if you just do that, that's bare minimum. But the problem is it's so hard. It's so hard because you're so, so addicted to all these things. So, I mean, bro, I don't have Instagram. I, don't, I haven't had the app in like three months. When you deleted it off your phone, did you find yourself like ghost tapping? Trying yeah, to go to it for like, like a it? few days. And then I was like, then I got over it and I just don't have it now. And, and I get like, I find different things to be addicted on. Like, for example, now I'm addicted to like CoinGecko. Like I refresh the crypto markets and I do that a couple times a day. There's a chance that makes you money. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I guess it, it could lead into something positive. But my screen time has gone down dramatically. So I have... I could have Instagram if I want it. I can be distracted if I want to. But if I'm not being distracted and I have millions of dollars, you should definitely, definitely not be distracted, in my opinion. But greater, again, it's just my plan. Live greater, your life. Do what you want. <laughs> there's a greater goal. There's a greater goal. Yeah, and I will say I will say one last thing, champ. Sorry to cut you off. No. In my pursuit of improvement and money and all the things and like trying to be the best and always like chase more, in that pursuit... I have found overwhelming levels of happiness and fulfillment that I've never felt in my life before ever. So I had a very unfortunate childhood, pretty traumatic in my opinion, pretty sad, pretty depressing. And in the pursuit of, of achievement and, and getting things out of life, I've found an endless source of happiness and fulfillment. I found amazing friends. I have people speak amazingly about me. I, I have a, a better view on the world. I'm only 24, so I'm still a kid, but still, I have found a lot of really, really good stuff here on this side. So you, that's like my gentle encouraging push as to why you should do this all. You have to. There's like so much good here. So yeah, I just want to say that. You're, we said it, you're just a kid from Romania. Yeah. That's it. Um, and that's what I want the key takeaway from this conversation to be, because there is so much useless YouTube content, dude, and it's so easy to get caught um in sort of empty platitudes and like i don't want this video to be that if there's one takeaway from this video for anyone who watches it it's something that sounds extremely basic and stupid but it's yeah. to just move put one foot in front of the other on whatever the whatever that thing was whatever that thing is that you think about that if you had one tiny idea about it one time, oh, maybe I could start this, or maybe I would like drop ship, you know what I mean? Maybe I can grow a brand this way. Spend, subtract one hour of whatever else you're doing in your day that is not moving you closer to that goal and do that one thing instead, you have immediately surpassed almost the entire United States or Earth's population. Most of your competition. Yeah, in, in, in regards to how much they are making themselves better because that is the most, to me, that's the, the only pursuit. The most noble pursuit is improvement. Mm -hmm. And I've watched you do it. I've watched Sebastian Escueda, who's not on camera, do it. And 
I know from my own life experience that yes, not only stretching, but the constant pursuit <laughs> of betterment has brought me more joy than yeah. anything else that I've ever done. So, and this is my last question for you. Okay. You are still pursuing. Mm -hmm. You are still getting better. You are still working. What is Sebastian George you working on now? What are you doing? So now I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm trying to spend more time learning about macroeconomics, trying to understand Good man. the economy and how it works because I, I think I've reached a point where I have, I'm sitting on enough money to really, really, really make some powerful moves for myself and really set myself up well. So I, I want to understand all the markets and how they work. Um, and so I'm just kind of paying attention to the world and, and what's going on. Um, so that I'm spending a lot of time doing that. I'm spending, so learning, I'm spending a lot of time on my YouTube channel and growing because a personal brand is like a tree that never stops giving. So it's been plentiful in so many ways, even beyond money. Uh, I'm growing that. I'm, um, I'm working on a SaaS company that involves AI. I'm very excited about this. This was like my, uh, one of those businesses that I'm, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm gonna be really passionate about. I'm actually not just working on one, I'm working on a few, but um, I think that these are the businesses that are gonna really make a huge impact um, on the world and also the businesses that will be worth like eight figures. So I've never had a business that was worth over $10 million. I wanna do that, I wanna prove to myself and to the world that I'm not just a guy that can speak to a camera. I can actually start and run a business. So I want to prove that to everyone, including myself, most importantly, myself. Um, we talked about that last night. Yeah. So that SAS, I'm, I'm also going to work on real estate in the meantime. So this house is going to finish up soon. I'm pretty sure I'm going to sell it, live in the apartment and get started on the next project, which will be a commercial lot. So yeah, dude, it's freaking cool. Like I'm, I'm probably in the next two years, we're going to be working on three or four things. And I'm also building a, a trading bot, but that's just small stuff. <laughs> but I'm working on like three or four things and each individual is like valued at millions and millions and millions of dollars. So uh, simultaneously, so it's sick. Like it's really sick to build them all up and know how valuable they are. So yeah, that's that's what I'm working on. And ever ever the humble guy, you and the other Sebastian who's on a camera are working on a couple things together too, yeah? Yeah, uh, wait, what do you mean like the the uh, SAS stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, m me and him are going to do something together. I have some ideas of my own as well. And yeah, I'm so. excited. I'm excited to watch it play out, dude. I've watched your channel since the last time we got on camera together, uh, more than double. And if you know, you watch this video and we're like, Oh, you're just a talking head. Go look like go watch what happened the past six months. As I watched him learn a lot of this in real time. It's been outstanding, man. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, I'm happy we got to shoot together today. I appreciate it. I think we're going to get a lot of good content out of this one. Um, never Let's one go. to mince words. Never one to not have opinions. Sebastian Georgiou, um, it's been incredible, man. I appreciate you coming on, and uh, that's it. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Good stuff, man. <laughs>